Hey, what's up everyone? In today's video, I want to revisit functions. I noticed a lot of people have been using it incorrectly or they simply don't know how it works. So I just want to make sure that everyone's on the same page before we move forward onto more complicated things. So one key thing to remember is that a function can return a value or nothing at all. So let's do a quick example together. So I've seen some people do this print and then they try to print again. So now if we run this code, you're going to see that it prints none. So basically this print function actually returns nothing. The only thing that a print function does is that it outputs a value into the console. So this outer print here is trying to output the value of print, which essentially returns nothing. And that's why we see none here. So now let's write a function, divine funny joke. And this function will just return a joke. So return, uh, uh, I'm so funny. And now if you run your code, nothing will happen. So I've also seen a lot of comments where people are asking why their code doesn't work, even though they copied everything from the video. So once you have a function, think of it like a recipe. And in order for you to use it, you have to call this recipe. So in this example, it's funny joke. So now if I copy it and then I paste it here. So funny joke is the name of the function. And to call it, we open the parenthesis. And now we can click run. And as you can see, nothing happened. Do you know why? So the reason why it doesn't work is because we're not using the value that is returned by the function. So in order to see the return value, we have to call print. So we have to do print and now we call funny joke. So we put it inside the parenthesis. And now when we click run, we're going to see, haha, I'm so funny. So always remember in order to use a function, you have to call it. All right, cool. On to the next part. In addition, functions can also take in parameters. So if we want to customize our function to do extra things, we can add parameters. So in this case, let's add a name parameter. So instead of saying, haha, I'm so funny, we're going to change it. So then it says, haha, the name of this person is so funny. So we can do haha, open the squiggle brackets and inside here, put zero and then do dot format. And then in here, just put in the name. So now let's click run. And here we're going to get an error. Please read the error message because it's very important. So here it tells us on line four, which is right here where we call our function. It says type error, funny joke, missing one required positional argument name. So this error message is just saying that we're not passing an argument for name, which is right here. So here we can just add a parameter. So here we can say Vincent and now we can click run. And here you're going to see, haha, Vincent so funny. So that's all a function really does. It's not that complicated and it's actually pretty useful. So now let's actually jump into a real life example. So a few videos back, we created this mortgage calculator. As you can see, it's very simple. It has some variables and it has some math calculations. So one issue with this program is that if I want to change, let's say the rate, I have to update this variable. So let's say the rate is 0.03. We just have to update the variable and this will output the mortgage. However, when you have a program where you're changing variables very often, it's very easy to make a mistake and maybe erase something or even change a value that you don't want to change. So this leads me to my next point. We can fix this very easily by using a function. Now the real question is how do we write this function? What should be a parameter and what should we return? So in this example, I think it's very clear what we want the parameters to be. As you can see, we have these four variables here, which can be changed very often. So in this case, these should be our parameters. So let's start writing our function. So here, let's write define and now let's type mortgage calculator. And then in here, let's pass in the first parameter, which is principal, rate, months in year, and finally the term. And now we end it with a colon and then we hit enter. And as you can see on Replit, it automatically indents the next line for us. So remember when you're writing a function, it's very important that your code is indented after the signature of the function, which is defined mortgage calculator. So this way, this code exists inside the function. So now I'll comment on these lines. And now inside this function, we can just copy these lines and paste it in here. And now we have to fix the spacing. So let's tab this, tab this. And as you can see, this line is very long and it doesn't look that great. And as a good practice, you should probably split up your lines so that way it's not too long so that it's easier to read. So let's break this statement up. As you can see, there's a numerator and a denominator. So let's split those up. So let's call this numerator equals, and let's copy this line and put it here. So now we can remove these parentheses and now let's go to the next line and call it denominator and let's set it to equals. And now let's put this. So let's do one minus 
plus rate by months and year to the power of negative total months. Cool, so now this looks a lot cleaner. So now let's create a new line. And remember, a function can return a value. So in this case, we want to know what the monthly payments will be. So now let's return the numerator divided by the denominator. And here's our function. So let's delete the code below. And I'll keep this here. And now let's call our function. So mortgage calculator, pass in the principal, which is 500,000, rate is 0 0.03, months and year 12, and the term is 30. And now let's click run. And nothing happens because we have to use print on this function. So that way we can output the return of the function. So now let's add a print here. And now let's close the parentheses. And now let's click run. And here we get our monthly payment. And that was very simple. So now let's get rid of this. And the beauty of this is that now we can play around with the values without changing too much. So for example, let's go through a simple scenario. So whenever you're buying a home, you want to try different things out. You want to play around with the variables so that way you can figure out a price that works for you. And don't forget guys, the more research you do, the better position you'll be in. So here, let's add a string. So let's do option A. And here we can put a squiggle bracket and put a zero and then close it. And then we close the string and put a dot and then put format and open the parentheses like this. And now if we run the code, we're gonna see Option A, 2102. And here's a cool thing that you can do. Usually when you deal with money, you usually don't care about all the decimal places and you usually just care about the last two. So here we can use a function called round. So we can do round and then open the parentheses and then close it. And basically all this does is it rounds a number to a given precision in decimal digits. So now let's click run. And here you're gonna see 2,108. So now we basically lost all of the decimal places which is not what we want, but if we want to keep the two last decimal places, we can add a comma here, and then we put the value two, which means we want the last two digits. So now let's click run, and here we got 2108.02, perfect. All right, so now for the fun part. So now let's copy this line and put it down here, and now let's call this option B. And now let's say that we don't have that much money for down payment, so we need to borrow more money from the bank. So instead of $500,000, we can put $600,000. And now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we got 2,529.62. So now obviously, if you have to borrow more money, the more money you'll have to pay monthly. And as you can imagine, you can play around with these functions. And now we're actually programmers. We have a function and voila, we get the mortgage amount. So now go around and bug your friends and show them this cool project that you built. Hopefully this lesson was helpful and hopefully now you get to understand functions a little better. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next lesson.